Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us this evening, or I should say this afternoon. Uh, we're going to get started shortly. Um, we'll start with Coach Braun. Looks like he's on there. Welcome, Coach. Uh, congratulations on a great season in the Big Ten West Division Championship. Uh, and we'll, we're excited to welcome you to Orlando in a, in a couple of weeks. Obviously, you've been here before as a player, but um, excited to bring uh, have you back down here. Uh, we'll let you start off with an opening statement. And um, take it away, Coach. Uh, we're definitely excited to get down to, to the Citrus Bowl in Orlando, Florida, uh, and play in the prestigious uh, bowl game against a very, very high-quality opponent uh, in, in LSU. Uh, I know uh, our team has worked really hard uh, to try to improve this year and win football games and try to compete at the highest level. And uh, I think we've made strides as the season has gone on and uh, at times played some good football and learned a lot along the way. Uh, but anytime you get a chance to play a high caliber opponent like LSU uh, that's played a lot of really good football this year uh, down in Florida, I think our fans will be excited. Our players are, are really fired up and we're looking forward to getting down there. Jacob. Hi, Coach. Jacob Vernon from the Vernon Vernon. First off, what, what would it mean to compete against a coach like Brian Kelly and to be able to go up and, and call against a, a coach of that caliber? Well, anytime you play great opponents, uh, it's exciting. It's a challenge for myself, our coaches, and our team. We've had the opportunity to play a lot of really good football teams this year, and I think um, you know we've held our own at times. Other times, uh, there's some things we need to improve upon and get better at. Uh, I know last year we had the opportunity to play against Tennessee in the Music City Bowl, and uh, we were able to you know pull it out at the end. So that was a, a tremendous accomplishment for our football team. Now we're playing a, a team that's really good every year, a ton of talent on the field. They're really, very well coached. Uh, we know we're going to have to play our best game for four quarters to have a chance to win. And when you have to do that, it hopefully helps you prepare even harder and work even more uh, in order to get that done. Otherwise, uh, you're not going to come out with a win. And lastly, Coach, a, a game like this puts a lot of spotlight on your team and, and a lot of good experience and, and lessons for the players. What are you preaching to the guys to, to take in from this experience? Well, we were fortunate enough to play in the uh, Big Ten Championship last night, and it was a great stage and a great venue for our team to get the opportunity to play in just itself in the uh, Lucas Oil Stadium, a championship-level uh, game against an elite football team with a great crowd. Uh, and I think our team learned a lot. We were able to play fairly well the first half, and then the second half, unfortunately, some things spiraled the other direction. But, uh, you know, the more games you can play of that caliber, the better you're going to be. Uh, so we feel like this is just like that, you know, a high caliber opponent that's won a lot of really good football games. They do every year. They have a ton of talent and uh, they've played a, uh, some really good football at times this year with some really, really big wins. So we know that it's going to be exactly the same as uh, the Big Ten Championship, where it's going to be, um, you know, we've got to bring our A game in order to find a way to, to pull out a victory against this type of opponent. Uh, hey, Coach, Shea Dixon with On3. Uh, these two teams have never – played before is there some intrigue or uh, kind of what's the reaction when you get to get to a bowl game and face an opponent that the program has never you know played before well our reaction to playing LSU is uh, you know it's just a great opportunity we're going to have to buckle the chin straps and uh, work our rear end off just to have a chance to win so I know that uh, while we want to enjoy the, the bowl festivities and the atmosphere we're going to have to put in a lot of work um, you know if you're not playing uh, very, very well, and all three segments, offense, defense, special teams aren't really clicking, it can be a long day for us. So we're going to have to figure out a way to you know, get a good plan together, uh, match the intensity, try to be as physical as we can on our side of it, uh, not make a lot of mistakes, and find a way to make plays and get touchdowns. So this just presents a really, really big challenge for our team uh, and a big hurdle that uh, when you play a team of this caliber in the SEC, uh, you, you've got to play uh, your best football in order to win. I think we had a question from Koki Riley. Koki, if you can unmute yourself. Coach, um, I, I was sort of curious, what's been sort of the key to Aiden O'Connell's success, the success this year? Well, Aiden uh, has had a lot of success uh, throughout his career. And uh, he started at the bottom as a walk-on. He just came in at the bottom of the depth chart. He's always been a great teammate, uh, an outstanding person. Uh, he has great faith in the man upstairs and in himself and his family and his teammates. Uh, and he just works really hard. So I think he's just took advantage of the opportunity when it came his way. I think uh, the last half of the season last year through the bowl game, he played at a very, very high level. 
He's continued to make some really good plays for us this year. And, and uh, you know, he just brings his A game. And I think, uh, you know, we throw the football quite a bit. He has to play well in order for us to win. He understands that. He, he relishes the pressure of that. And he looks forward to it every week. And I think that, uh, you know, any time that, you know, he steps on the field, we know we're going to get his best. Uh, his teammates know the same thing. I just think he's a competitor that uh, has found ways to continue to improve and uh, really done a good job for us this year. Hey, Coach, good afternoon. Jacques Doucet from uh, Channel 9 here in Baton Rouge. How are you, Coach? Very good. How are you? Good, good. Um, Drew Brees, obviously, has meant a lot to uh, the state of Louisiana, a, a legend down here. I, it, it always seems like he's very proud of where he went to college and very supportive. I've seen him give talks to your team over the years as well. What's it been like to have him in your corner? Well, he's the best ambassador you can have, uh, and he sets a great example in everything he does on the field, off the field, obviously at Purdue and uh, in NFL ranks. He's given a whole lot to our program and university, uh, not only just our football team, but he's also supported our football team greatly. He's been to quite a few games each and every year, even when he was playing. I know there was one year I think he attended two of our games while his season was going on, which is more than rare. Uh, he's had the, had the opportunity and we've welcomed that to, to uh, talk to our team and express his words of, of wisdom, which have really helped. Uh, and he wants Purdue to be successful. So I think that uh, just a great person who's achieved a lot. He, he is proud of his Purdue background and we want to make him proud. And that is by, you know, trying to overachieve and do the best we can. And any, anytime he can help us, we're always look forward to that. And coach, just a follow up. I know you just got announced uh, and playing in this game, but what are the bowl preparations like when you're not really sure who the quarterback may be from the other team or preparing for two quarterbacks or, or so forth? Well, you know, LSU has a great roster itself, so we're going to have a lot of issues to deal with outside of the quarterback position. I know that, uh, you know, both quarterbacks that played the last game performed uh, very well. Uh, Jaden, of course, is a great athlete, can run around and make plays. Those guys are always hard to contain, especially for us. So we'll definitely have challenges there. And then uh, when they brought in Nussmeyer, he did a really good job. So uh, we've got plenty of problems uh, and issues to deal with outside of the quarterback position. Uh, but of course, you know, that's somebody you have to contain somehow. So we're going to have to find a way to, you know, stop them from getting points. Uh, but I think they can do it a lot of ways on the ground, in the air, uh, and with great defense. So we've got our hands full. It's going to be a, uh, a lot of preparation has to go into it in order for us to, uh, you know, get into the game and feel confident that uh, chance to win. Coach, if I'm not mistaken, you were at Western Kentucky in 2015. Was that the only time you faced LSU as a coach? And kind of what are your memories? I think I think it is. Uh, I do remember it was uh, a really, really rainy day. Uh, it had rained hard. <laughs> Uh, a lot during the day and even in pregame warmups. I mean, you know, even though it was, there's, there's a crowd on the field that drains well, it was about an inch of rain on the field. So there were concerns. You know, we were a passing team at the time. And uh, you know what? I know we hung with them for a little while. We came out and threw the ball for quite a few yards and some touchdowns. But actually, I think they threw the ball for a lot of yards that game when their running game was really strong with Leonard Fournette. So uh, the crowd wasn't uh, in full effect because of the bad weather. Uh, but just a really talented football team. They can beat you a lot of ways. And as soon as you think you can try to contain something, uh, they, they bring out talent in a different position and, and they find a way to make it work. So, like I said, I just think uh, overall talent uh, on both sides of the ball and special teams. They got athletes. They've got talented guys that look the part and play the part and they're well coached. So it's going to be a, um, you know, a tough task for us. Hey, Jeff, this is Michael Cobble from uh, WBRZ TV in Baton Rouge as well. I'm sorry I didn't get to watch a lot of your team this year. I saw a little bit yesterday, but what do you feel like you hang your hat on offensively and then defensively? Just kind of give us a taste of, of what you guys have done for, for our audience here in Baton Rouge. I think, uh, you know, we, we do try to throw the ball a little bit at Purdue, and, uh, you know, we've got a good, accurate quarterback who can get the ball out on time, pretty precise in, in passing the football. Uh, we've got a little bit better running the ball, but we got to continue to improve and get better at that. Um, I think we try to be creative on, on, on the offensive side and help our offense uh, succeed and make plays. Defensively, we've gotten better. Uh, we've done some good things uh, stopping the run. Uh, we need to get a little better stopping the pass and uh, improve in that area as well. But, um, you know, we've, uh, you know, our team plays hard and they compete and we found ways to, 
to win some big games over the years. We've found ways to lose some games that uh, we'd like to have back. But that's football. And I just know our guys at Purdue, uh, they work hard. They compete. They all got a chip on their shoulder. They're out to prove people uh, that they can play football as well. And they work really hard. So I just think that every week, you know, whether we win or lose, we come back and we play hard. They give us everything they have. And that's all we can ask. All right. Thank you again, Coach Brown, for your time. Congratulations. And uh, we look forward to welcoming you to Orlando in a few weeks. Okay, thank you. See you guys soon. All right. I think we have Coach Kelly on the line and we can get rolling right into there. Coach, welcome. Uh, congratulations on a great season. If you'd like to give an opening statement, you can go right ahead and then we'll get into some questions. And, uh, I know our team uh, certainly is is looking forward to getting back um, on it, the winning ways. And, you know, we've lost two games, um, you know, obviously to the number one team in the country this past weekend. Um, but again, you know, playing Purdue, a team that uh, won their side of the Big Ten. Uh, I have a lot of respect for Jeff and um, his teams play with an edge, uh, played him when I was at Notre Dame and, um, you know, he's got a great creative offense, um, really good, uh, defensive structure, uh, and, and it'll be a great matchup between, you know, two teams that, you know, want to go out on, on a winning note, um, we've had good years, but, uh, we want them to be, uh, years that, uh, you know, finish on a, on a positive note. So uh, excited about, uh, being back in Orlando. Um, seeing some old friends, uh, really appreciate this opportunity to play in this game and uh, certainly against, uh, you know, a Big Ten team that's uh, so well coached by, by, by Coach Brown. Hey, Coach, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, uh, Coach, um, you, you put this big emphasis on graduating champions and academics. This is that time of year where guys could be ineligible. Like, I guess last year there were a few for a bowl game. How, how much – you feel like uh, you guys have done a good job with that, so they have their grades in order and whatnot. And then if I could ask a second question, just, you know, in this new era when you sometimes don't know who's going to play in the bowl and, and who's not. Yeah, we'll have that all sorted out over the next 24, 48 hours. Certainly, you know, you, you don't worry about academics just one day. You know, we've been on it since we've got here. Uh, every single day has been – you know, working to uh, improve uh, who we are uh, academically and, and how we do things on a day-to-day -day basis. So this isn't just like, hey, let's, the season's over. Let's, let's worry about our guys <laughs> in the classroom. Uh, this is a, I'm in every uh, meeting every week when it comes to academics. Our, our staff is aware of that. So could there be somebody ineligible? There might be. Um, you know, we have some guys that have to continue to do some things at the end here, uh, but we've made great strides there. And, and I feel really good about the progress we've made academically uh, with our guys recognizing the value of a degree from LSU. Um, and then there's guys that um, are evaluating whether, you know, they should be playing in a bowl game or should they, you know, be working out and preparing for, you know, an all-star game or, you know, should they be preparing to, uh, you know, uh, get better for a combine run you know look those are all things that will help and counsel our guys with and and we'll give them both sides of the story is it better to practice and prepare and and work on your skill development as you kind of get ready for you know an east west shrine game or uh, a you know a senior bowl uh is is that better than you know trying to run a 40 uh, we'll, we'll give them all that information and then ultimately it's their choice you know and and we'll support them in in whatever choice they in fact make hi coach kelly uh first off i just want to see what you thought of garrett nussmar's performance and and, and how you graded it i thought garrett did some really good things you know i mean clearly you know he's a guy that uh you know it's got a strong arm, sees the field well, um, you know, you know, fit the ball into some tight windows. Um, you know, he made some mistakes as well, which, you know, clearly, um, you know, those are areas that, that he'll have to improve on. But, you know, I think going in, uh, you know, and doing the things that, that we kind of thought he was capable of, um, I hope he leaves there, um, you know, in, in this experience with a lot of confidence that, that he can, uh, go in and, and lead our football team to, uh, you know, championships. And and because that's how we felt about him, you know, and I, I think I was on record saying that we've got two really good quarterbacks. And if Jaden couldn't play, we believed in Garrett. Um, please go to the audio tape. Uh, that uh, 
it, we could win with Garrett. And uh, I think he, he did a really nice job. There's some things we got to clean up, but um, he's a good quarterback too. Hey coach, um, curious, just your thoughts in a little more detail on Jeff Brom from kind of what he was at Western Kentucky to, to how he's now put together a roster and, and plays offensively at Purdue. Yeah, I, you know, listen, I, I think he's got a national reputation as a creative play caller, and he is. Let's let's face it, he's very creative. I think he does a really good job. They're going to throw the football, and 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 they always have a big physical back, and in, in which they do again this year. Um, but they play with an edge. I mean, this is a team that you know they you know he talked about you know we're good old Purdue, and hey, you know we're going to rally. And listen, he he coaches his guys uh, and, and does a great job of of getting them ready to play physical football, um, you know, Indiana, Midwest, uh, toughness. He recruits those kind of guys. So uh, it's not just um, talk. I mean, I, I've gone against them and they, they play physical, they play hard uh, and you better be ready to play for four quarters because they're going to come after you for four quarters. It's not just about pretty plays and creative play calling. And, and that happens too. But I think what makes his team, um different is is they play really hard and they play physical hey brian it's uh mike Cobble. i hey, was mike. just curious your memories of playing lsu in this bowl game it, i don't have the best memory so let me probably correct me if i'm wrong but i thought lsu got hosed on a goal line touchdown against the irish uh just from the other side now your thoughts on that game oh that, that definitely was not a touchdown no i i, I don't think that was uh, and i and I and I can only see it from one perspective. So um, I was on the I was on the wrong sideline at that time. But um, what I do remember about the game uh, in particular was, from an offensive standpoint, LSU struggling offensively, um, and, and and you know LSU playing really good defense, and then making a play. Um, Notre Dame making a play down the sideline. Miles Boykin went up. Um, the ball was, was, I think deflected and, and he just stayed with it, made a play down the sideline. And, and I think that was really the difference, you know, both teams, you know, kind of struggled on offense and, and it was a kind of a defensive struggle and um, made a play down the, down the stretch and, and came up with the win. And it was cold and that never happens in Orlando. It's not supposed to, right? At least that's what Steve Hogan tells me. All right, Coach. Uh, so far, has there been any uh, timetable or, you know, any news on Jaden Zanko or what, what's the process going to be moving forward with Jaden? Yeah, he's probably going to need about a week to 10 days. Uh, so we won't practice him this Saturday. So he'll be out this week. Um, probably take it into the middle of next week before we start to even think about getting him out and around. So give him, give him plenty of time so he's you know, 100% healthy, you know, no sense of re-aggravating it, putting him in a situation where, you know, he gets back in, in into a, you know, in and out the, of the line, lineup kind of situation. So, uh, you know, I think uh, Bo Lowry, our head athletic trainer, is, is looking for at least, you know, 10 days where, where he can really recover and get that thing back to 100%. Hey, Coach, everyone has the answers after the fact, obviously, but um, what, what's your opinion on when you have offensively, when you have a third and short, fourth and short, in, in the shotgun, does a running back, does he get some momentum running to the line and that helps, or, you know, should you sneak it with the quarterback? Uh, obviously, you had the fourth and one yesterday. That was kind of a, a tough play for you. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you have to have all of those things. I think, you know, we talked about, you know, a quarterback sneak in that situation. Uh, we just didn't feel like our quarterback had uh, done it enough as a backup. We, we had not repped it enough. We didn't feel as comfortable with it in that situation. Um, we have with Jaden, we just didn't feel as, as comfortable as the play. You know, we got beat off the ball uh, flat out. Give Georgia credit. They, they were better at the line of scrimmage and they beat, they beat us off the ball, but I, I do believe you have to have direct snap. I think you've got to get the ball out on the perimeter. I think you have to strike not just inside, you know, all the time. You've got to have some look, if you're going to go for it on fourth down, 
you're, you're not conservative anyway. So you don't have to be conservative in your play calling. You, you need to find a way to get a first down. And if they're pinching uh, and, and they're physical and they can knock you back, you, you got to think about other ways to pick up first downs as well. Um, coach, I'm just curious. Uh, so often all coaches talk about the importance of bowl practices, both for the game, but also just moving into the off season and next year. Just curious your thoughts there as you move into year two. Yeah, I think there's some uh, validity to it, uh, especially going from year one to year two. Like, we'll, you know, we protected some guys this year, you know, the Quincy Wiggins, um, you know, uh, Jaden Davis ran, you know, ran off. I mean, I think there's some young guys that need some work uh, that I think that this is going to be an effective first, you know, four or five practices where, where we really can lean on them and get them a lot of work. Um, and look, we're not blessed where we have, you know, so much depth. I mean, we're still in a position where we've got to build up, you know, this program through recruiting and, uh, that's that's still you know uh, a chief concern but we do have some young players that we're anxious to see uh in these first three or four practices in particular um you know get out there and and, and really give them a lot of work yeah coach i told you i had a terrible memory that was the music city ball i've been told so oh, uh, yeah. my question my question was simple no disrespect to the cheese ball of course um my question was about the scheduling, though, because it's a later bowl. Will that give you a chance maybe to catch up on some of the recruiting that you needed still to do? And, and how will you approach it, given the guys time off for exams and downtime? Well, it goes it goes dead. Um, I think we go dead on the, the 19th. So it really doesn't the, the date really doesn't help us, you know, any, it, you know, whether we played on the 30th or the second, it, there's no real you know, advantages, uh, you know, our situation is that we begin classes on the 17th. And so, you know, when you talk about, you know, th that means you've got to do anything, you know, early in, in January, um, you know, for visits and such. So it's, it's a really tight calendar. I mean, you know, the portal opens on Monday, um, you know, decisions have to be made here, you know, quickly relative to who's going in, um, you up against it with visits, you know, the amount of visits that you have. So this is going to be, you know, a very interesting couple of weeks here, you know, going to have to be very, um, very calculating. You're going to have to make some, some really uh, tough decisions uh, on your roster. Um, and uh, they're, they're going to be difficult ones. Um, and, I think that that's, that's what these next couple of weeks are going to really look like. Brian, when it, uh, Wilson here from the FK here, when it comes to that transfer portal um, being open, what are y'all going to be looking for in terms of positions uh, when you're looking in the portal this year? Well, I mean, I, I don't want to talk about any particular positions because I think it, you know, you start then to, to, I, I kind of give away some, you know, here are our weaknesses, but here, here's what I would tell you. They got to be the right fit first. You know, they've got to recognize the value of an education from LSU. They, they've got to have the right traits. We're not just open for business. We're not just putting a, you know, a sign up saying, Hey, we're going to take whoever they got to be the right fit. I prefer that they're from the state of Louisiana, if we can find them. Um, and then, you know, we're going to address needs based upon, you know, how that freshman class um, marries into it by, you know, the particular needs by position class. So we're not going to overload a particular position group. Um, in other words, if we've got three or four wide receivers that are freshmen coming in, you know, you may not see, you know, a, a heavy influence in the portal in that position. We're going to develop um, based upon our freshman class too. Um, so we're doing this, you know, at the same time um, and, and also allowing our program to be younger, too. We, we want to bring both of these along. We don't always want to be a turn it over program where we're bringing in transfers and turning the program over. So we need to grow and, and, and you got to do that by recruiting freshmen and giving them the opportunity to step on the field and, and develop. And you can't do that if you keep 
bringing in freshmen at one position and then bringing a, a portal guy who's got one year and, and putting him in front of him. Hey, Coach. Um, uh, the interesting thing with the portal this year is that there's also the second window in the spring. Um, how are you sort of trying to, to uh, approach uh, the those two windows? And um, do you want to be more aggressive in this window so you don't have to worry as much in the next? Or are you sort of leaning on that second window as well? Well, I think everybody's got their own business plan. Um, I think how we're using it is... Um, you know, internally, the second window is much more about how our guys develop and we're giving them an opportunity to develop and do the right things, make sure that they're uh, going to class, uh, making good choices, making good decisions, um, doing it the right way in, in, in the weight room, um, developing in the manner that we expect them to. And if not, then, you know, that portal opens up in May. Coach, there's always this um, sentiment that winning a bowl game gives you momentum into the offseason and helps. Is that the case since the last two games didn't go your way? Does that put more importance on this bowl game or how do you yeah, do it? Yeah, it does when you lose your last two games. It does. Um, I, I, I think, you know, when, when you're trying to, you know, put an ending on what has been in many ways an, an outstanding season relative to – you know, inside out. I know everybody judges seasons on wins from an outside perspective, but inside out, it's been it's been really good from my perspective as the head coach. You you do want people to feel good about it from an outside in perspective, and a win would do that. Ten wins does that. It's kind of that, you know, that mark that if you can get the double digits, you know, you can kind of walk away and go, all right, everybody feels good about it. Um, season tickets are up. Everybody's feeling good. Everybody's patting themselves on the back. Um, I feel like we've done really good things internally um, and we've hit that mark, but, but definitely a win here is, is really important to everybody. All right. Thank you so much, coach Kelly, for your time. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for being on the call. Appreciate it. Of course.